Warning, this content may be disturbing to some audiences. Subscribe. If you dare. My birth father said that I was never to contact him or I would face legal consequences. Hey everybody, welcome to, an Anecdost. People ask Reddit. Adopted Redditors, did you ever contact your birth parents? If so, was it worth it? Number 1. My father was adopted. In 1990, when I was 6 years old, he decided to do everything he could to find his birth parents. In 1992, he found them. Well, he found his birth mother. His birth father had died in his 30s. Here are the reasons that it was good for him. Mima, as my siblings and I call her, is a sweet, wonderful woman. She gave my father up for adoption because she was 15 when she had him. She ended up marrying his father. She had felt guilty about giving up her child her entire life, and my father had felt a sense of misplacement throughout his. Therefore, finding each other filled a void in each of them. Since his mother and father had ended up marrying each other, he had a full brother, as well as a very extended family otherwise. His brother and he look very much alike, share many of the same interests, and have chosen similar paths in life. They're best friends now. He found the search for his birth parents so interesting, and learned so much doing it, he ended up going into searching for people's birth parents as a profession. Eventually he got his master's in social work and finally figured out what he wanted to do with his life, kind of, it's a stressful industry, so now that he's getting older he's moved to something a little less difficult on the body and heart. His father died of lung cancer in his 30s. My father was a smoker at the time. In his 30s. He quit soon after he found his birth mother. In addition to such specific ancestral health information, general health history has been helpful to him and my siblings. Getting a new grandmother was awesome for me, my brother and my sister as well. Each of the above reasons, plus more Christmas presents. It should be noted that it doesn't always work out this well. Not by a long shot. My father had an adopted brother whom he helped to also find his birth parents. It turned out that his mother was 13 when she had him and his father was her rapist grandfather. So, that could happen. Regardless, once you've decided that you want to find out, you're never going to feel complete until you make an effort to do so. Number 2. Commenter. I could meet my birth mother and I kinda want to. However, I am the product of an extramarital affair. Due to this, my birth father said that I was never to contact him or any of his kids, my half-siblings, or I would face legal consequences. So yeah that's a really hard thing for me to deal with sometimes. Person B. There are no legal consequences you could face, your birth father just sounds like an ass. Commenter. That's really reassuring to hear. I've found them on Facebook and I've wanted to just send them a message saying, well this is a bit awkward but I'm your half-brother, so how's the weather wherever you're living? But I've always decided that I'd just rather not risk any sort of legal trouble. Number 3. Commenter. I have tried without success to track them down, mostly just my birth mother. The bullshit part is that we had an open adoption which means that if either part wants to make contact they should be able to and the agency should play a part in facilitating that. I found out when I started looking for her years ago that she made a request to the agency for pictures and a possible meeting when I was 10 and they just never bothered informing us. It breaks my heart to imagine that she most likely assumed we received the request but denied it. That I just wasn't interested. Words cannot describe how angry I am at the agency for dropping the ball on that one. I mostly just want to tell her that I understand why she made the decision that she did and I'm grateful to her for making an unselfish decision. She wasn't stable enough to provide me with the life she believed I deserved so she made sure I was taken care of by people who could. She was bipolar and entering a psychiatric hospital around the time I was put up for adoption. I want to tell her that I'm bipolar too and was recently hospitalized at around the same age so I understand what she was going through. I also want to ask her about her experience and if it was similar to mine. Person B. I'm angry for you. That agency has a contract of responsibility. Things like this make me furious because it's your life, not a game. Number 4. My mom was part of a, pretty stereotypical, closed adoption. When she was around 42 she found her biological sister by chance. I'm not sure of all the details, she had looked before but didn't want to find someone who didn't want to find her. Her and her biological sister are 10 months apart, but her bio mom kept her sister. We are now in full contact with my mom's biological family. One thing my mom taught me at a very young age, is that our Grammy, her adopted mother, is her real mom. When someone asks who her real mom is, she says it is her adoptive mom. 
Grammy raised my mother practically from birth, and because she didn't give birth to my mother doesn't make her any less of a mother to her. After a couple of years, I became comfortable referring to my biological grandma and grandma. She recently asked my mother to call her mom, and I believe mom had some trouble with it. Number 5. My wife found her birth mother about 4 years ago via a post on one of the Find Your Birth Parent slash Child sites. She had looked through about 1,200 posts. When she saw the one with her info she was shaken to the core. We talked about what to do next. I don't think she expected to find anything. We did email the person who posted. There were a lot of verification questions based on things they knew about the adoption process to try to ensure that it wasn't a scam. Everything checked out. They talked a day or two later. The conversation lasted hours and my wife found out that she has a whole family she didn't know about, lots of cousins, aunts, uncles etc. Her birth mom became an instant grandmother. I now have two mothers-in-law. One of the most difficult parts of the discovery for her was telling her mom and dad an adoptive. Her parents adopted her almost 40 years ago. She wasn't sure how to tell them. She waited about two weeks unsure how to proceed. When she finally did tell them, they were supportive as always. They always knew it was a possibility. They just wanted to know that their little girl was okay. A couple of years passed, communication continued, and we decided to make the 2200 mile trip to meet her birth mom. We made it a family driving trip and visited all of the standard spots including the Spam Museum in Austin, MN. That was pretty cool. My wife was okay the whole trip until we got about 30 minutes away. At that point all of the trepidation hit her and she wasn't sure what to do. I talked her through it and 30 minutes later we pulled into the driveway. One of her birth mom's closest friends was there as well. The moment the truck entered the driveway both of them started crying. It was a wonderful first per second meeting. They talked for 5 or more hours before calling it a night. The next afternoon, we met the rest of the family. It was interesting seeing their resemblances and watching her discover some of the genetic quirks demonstrated by other members of her newfound family. We spent a week there and had a great time. They talk pretty regularly and both feel like a void has been filled in their lives. I don't know if this is normal, but it worked out really well for my wife and her birth mom. Number 6. I was put into foster care at the age of 15, and though I haven't been legally adopted I still live with my foster family. I aged out of the system and didn't see my biological mom since I was around 16. I'm 19 now and just last Sunday was the first time I talked to her. Some backstory, my mother was abusive and addicted to meth. I have two younger brothers which I raised, now 9 and 6. I was the one who called the cops for domestic violence and worked so hard to get a better life for my family. My biological mother later decided that she would sober up a bit to get the boys back, and I didn't go back home. Since the court date giving her back the rights to my brothers I hadn't seen or talked to her. I recently decided it was time, and I met up with her. She didn't know I was coming, it was after a visit with my brothers. She hugged me and began to cry. Honestly at first I thought I was going to be angry and yell at her, but our talk was really calm. She said she felt that he had been a good mother to me. I told her I felt the opposite and that no loving mother would do what she did to her kids. I told her how I hated her, that I didn't see her as my mother, and that even though she haunts me I pray she will sober up to be a good mother for my brothers. It was maybe a 20 minute talk but damn did it feel good. I don't need to talk to her again. The weight and grief from what I went through has lightened and I can move on. So, yes, I think that talking to biological parents can be a good thing, but only if you're ready. Number 7. Commenter. I found my birth parents when I was in my late 20s. It took a lot of combing through old birth announcements on microfiche and calling the adoption agency until I got someone sympathetic. They didn't tell me outright the names but they gave me all the info they could legally and then confirmed a name I had. My birth mother denied my existence. I never called her again. My birth father is a nice guy. He and my, full, brother flew out to visit me, and I've seen them several times since. Through him, I got my medical info and a few details about my first few months. It was worth it for me to find out. My adopted sister has no interest in finding her birth parents. We are both in our 40s with our own kids now so to each his own. Person B. Were your father and brother able to say why she denied your existence? Was your brother adopted, and does she also deny that he exists? It seems like something very traumatic must have happened to her to make her want to deny a child she gave birth to. Commenter. I'm not sure about my birth mom situation, but pregnancy out of wedlock particularly in teenage girls, was a scandal of the highest order back in those days. 
there were only two socially acceptable solutions, adoption or marriage, of the shotgun variety. It was a very different time. You can Google Baby Scoop era for some further reading on how very different a time it was. In summary, the vast majority of unwed, usually teenage mothers found themselves in a maternity home. Sometimes, they were sent there by their parents. Sometimes, they were recruited right off the streets, no doubt with enticing lies and or heavy guilt tripping. Maternity homes were effectively minimum security prisons by another name. The birth mothers-to-be were kept as inmates. For various, backwards reasons that I won't get into, it was largely accepted that they were dysfunctional individuals who needed to be taught a harsh lesson. In Canada, and I believe elsewhere, the vast majority of babies were not voluntarily relinquished, but taken and illegally trafficked to adoption agencies. Abuses of all manner were common in maternity homes. In short, it was routinely a traumatic experience for these young women, for a long list of reasons. Number 8. I was adopted by my stepfather after my real father skipped town on my mom and myself. He raised me as if I were his own and I have had a good life. By the time I turned 19 or so my real father wanted to get a hold of me and I ignored it. My thought pattern was why should I give him the time of day if I never received it. Sometimes I do second guess my decision though. The story is that he knocked my mom up when she was 15 and he was 17. Fast forward a year or two after being born and they've decided to start a life together to try and make it work. So the three of us are on our way to my mom's sister's place for dinner with her family. Apparently what happened was he asked mom to stop driving, he got out of the car, said that he's out, and hitchhiked almost 90 miles back to where they both were from. The only memory I have of him was him taking my candy bar and devouring it in front of me. It wasn't until around 8 years later, when I was about 10, that my stepfather adopted me. My bio father had to be contacted to sign off that he has given up his parental rights to me. Number 9. My parents divorced when I was 3 and my dad was emotionally abusive throughout my whole childhood, textbook emotional abuse. So when I was 7, I stopped seeing him for a year and a half then caved and started seeing him again. I stopped again when I was 13, started again 6 months later immediately realizing it was a mistake, stopped again when I was 14, and am now 18 and haven't seen him since. Each time I stopped seeing him, I told him exactly why I wasn't happy seeing him, vocally and in writing, telling my dad I didn't want to see him when I was 14, face to face and seeing him start to cry and everything was by far the most difficult thing I've ever done, as I had to keep a blank face or he'd think I wanted to see him and my mom was pressuring me or something. I know my dad loves me and I know he never had a good example of a father so he's managed to kind of f up parenting me and my half-brothers, and I know I broke his heart when I stopped seeing him. But at the same time I know being around him made me angry, upset, and even depressed at times. I feel constantly guilty for not seeing him but at the same time, my life is so much easier without him and I'm still not sure I could deal with the emotional blackmail. I'm the type of person who stands up to people if I think they're doing anything wrong, and tells people to f off quite regularly even if it's at my own expense. I got beaten up quite badly by a guy at a party for not letting him fill up my unconscious friend, but my dad expects me to be totally unquestioning of his arguments and to just go along with what he says when he tells me not to be friends with someone, or whatever, and that means that we both just end up fighting. He was a great dad at times and he encouraged me to do lots of things that my mom didn't, such as creative writing and playing rugby, my mom didn't want her daughter getting hurt in such a rough sport, and his criticism about my school results pushed me to work harder which was good for me. But he still hurt me a lot and I'm not sure I like him as a person. He got in contact a couple of days ago because the main UK exam results came out and he wanted to know how I did, he also got in contact on my 18th birthday, but I never know how to respond because I still don't know if I did the right thing, it was right for me but I know I hurt him a lot and I have no way of knowing if he's changed. Make sure to share your personal story in the comments below and have the opportunity to be featured in a future video. Also, if you like these topics don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to continue seeing more content like this every day. See you next time.